yeah, thanks for thanks for being back. So, uh, yeah, if, uh, for any of you who are who been here throughout the week, uh, Melissa was here earlier in the week and did a presentation and is now back for another one today. So, hold on just a second. Let me finish getting set up. Monday feels like a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't yeah. believe that was just a couple of days ago. Yeah, I have not had much sleep this week, so <laughs> it's been it's been quite a week. But yeah, it's been a lot of a lot of good presentations, though. So, um, all right, I am all set up. So whenever you're ready, we can get started. Well, welcome everyone. My name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh. I started trading in 2008, which feels like a million years ago too, but. Uh, here it is. It's 2021. We're into the third month of the year. Uh, so we'll see where we go from now until, I guess, really even tomorrow, because uh, the market's falling today, unexpectedly, in my opinion. And we have an unemployment rate out tomorrow morning, which is a huge, huge, huge number. So I will be watching the market carefully. But what I do is I watch gaps and I rank gaps in the morning. I prefer to short, but I do go long. So I look for bullish gaps and bearish gaps and I work from home. So today's title of the presentation is about working from home and how you can make money trading and specifically shorting gaps. So today we're going to talk about shorts, which is a good topic since, since the market is selling off as we speak. So if you're someone that wants to make money in the market, uh, shorting may be for you because short moves happen fast. Why? Because of panic. Panic is happening right now as we speak. Pal is talking today, and I don't have it on. I didn't listen to what he said, but whatever he was saying is creating now panic in the market, which is creating selling. Okay, so the best shorts that you ever, ever get, sometimes you have shorts, but you also have sellers. Okay, those are the best shorts that you ever have. And if you're somebody that has the market bug that you have been trying at this and going at it year over year over year, trying to make a living trading, uh, you know, once the market bug bits you, it kind of has you, and you never really quite give up. So uh, when I started out trading, I really threw myself into it full throttle, and I worked full time doing mortgages. That was my job, and then I full time traded too because I did mortgages in a different time zone. So I was like West Coast, East Coast when I did my job. So I was really doing two full time jobs until I figured out my system, created my system, and, and uh, figured out how to make money in the market. So it took me about three years to do it. And I think a lot of people go back and forth. Do they want to do this? Do they not want to do this? You know, I think you're better off just committing yourself from the outset that you want to do this and you want to be successful, even if it ends up taking longer than you thought it was going to initially. You're better off with the commitment level as high because you will continue forward. So many people want to quit. And the one thing I can guarantee you is if you quit, you definitely will not make it. So you're better off just continuing forward, trying to learn new things, uh, doing classes, trading, being as active as you possibly can with your other job, which again, I was. And, and we're going to talk about some morning trades we did this week. I trade mostly in the morning. That's when I look at the gap. And the nice thing about trading the morning is you can trade in the morning and then you can get on with the rest of your day if you have to go to another job. And specifically, if you're in a different time zone, you know, like if you're on the West Coast, you can trade in the morning and then go and end up doing your job later in the day after you're done. Because we usually trade between 9.30 and 10 a.m. So if you don't have a lot of time to trade, if you have between 9.30 and 10 a.m., 10.15, sometimes we're in stuff for an hour, that's really all you need to short um, in the morning quickly, 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 quickly. And again, sometimes we go long. But those fast moves in the morning is what I'm looking for in the gap. And I'm gonna explain what a gap is here in a minute for those of you that don't know. But if you're looking for something to have more money coming in every month, if you are currently working from home because of COVID uh, and you want to do something else or have the time to do it, trading may be for you. And specifically, like I'm saying gaps because of the amount of time of the day isn't that much because the trades move fast. And not only that, the trades move big, okay? Uh, and we did we did Ross yesterday. I have that trade in here that was a short that had earnings. Um, that was a gap down. It was a big move. In fact, it moved past the point that I even exited the trade. So sometimes you will have trades that go big and go to what I would call the dream target. Okay. So if you've been thinking about trading but you don't know where to start, you know this may be a place for you to consider it. Again, working from home. 
having a strategy we're done fast in the morning and then you can get on with your day which a lot of people also find convenient not just because of covid but even in normal life so how do you become successful you need a strategy you need to focus and you need a system now the market's falling right now and i actually am not short this market and i'll tell you why and if we have time at the end I will bring up the market and we'll take a look at where we are uh, once I'm done talking here. But I didn't short the market because the market didn't have any gap that rated per my qualifications to short in the spot. And the, and the banks made brand new all-time highs um, in, in the last couple of days. So, you know, I am very, very strict with what I do with my strategy. And I get up in the morning, I look for my picks, and if they rate well, I do them. And if they don't, I don't do them or I don't do anything at all. So having that type of focus and a system to follow is, is the way that you can become successful because it is about consistency because you can't make money in the market long term, long term, week over week, month over month, year over year, unless you're consistent. It does not mean that every trade that I take works. Sometimes I take losses, okay? But it means that more trades I take win than lose. And that is what we're at with a level of consistency and that's where you need to be if overall you wanna make it. So the strategy that I do, the strategy that I use every day is gaps, okay? And again, let's talk about what, a, what is a gap. A gap is the difference between the close and the open. Simple, that's it. The US stock market closes every day at four o'clock and opens every morning at 9.30 a.m. Between that time period, after four and before 9.30 in the morning, the market has pre-market and post-market trading. Trades go off at night and they go off in the morning before the open. That is where the gap is being created. I'm seeing that. I'm not trading that after hours, okay? I'm not getting in positions and trading that after hours. It's a wild, wild west for me, but I'm analyzing that data and I'm looking at that data and I'm seeing that data and then I'm making trade choices to trade on the live day using that data, okay? So I'm entering trades after, after 9.30 and after I see the gap. So I'm not, I'm not uh, predicting that the gap is going to occur I'm predicting where it's gonna go after I see the gap. So again, what is a gap? This was back, a chart of the SPY, back from uh, the beginning of the week. Just gonna go back here. This seems like a long time ago based on where the market's trading right now, but the SPY gapped up. So what's a gap? It's a difference between the close and the open. Here's where the market closed on Friday, then it gapped up. So the market closed here at 380, gapped up here to 386. So the market had a, a really big gap up actually overnight from Friday to Monday. And on Monday, then we sold off, rally got bought, okay? So this is a bullish gap. Now let's look for a bearish gap. Back over here, this was the end of January, we had a bearish gap. Again, this is in the SPY. Market closed here, gap down. Closed up here around 384, opened down here in the morning around 382-ish, and fell. So you could have shorted this gap in the market on the gap down. You could have gone long this gap up here on Monday in the market that moved higher, okay? So anyways, you cannot short every gap down and you cannot go long every gap up. So I devised a strategy to determine which gaps would follow through in the gap, whether higher or lower, because you can't always do it in the right direction. So I devised a system to pinpoint which ones were good. Here's a good example, one over here. This was a gap up that sold off, okay? Now I didn't short this because again, I'm looking to short bearish gaps like that guy there. But here's a good example why you can't go long every gap up. This closed here gapped up. At this point, we were at new highs, then sold off. Okay. So you have to be very, 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 very picky with what you do. Here's another example of a gap down that did not move lower. Again, we didn't do this, but I just want to show you why you can't short every gap down even. This was a market here, closed here, gap down, reversed. That was back two weeks ago or three weeks ago. Okay, right there on the 17th. So I devised a way to pick what I call the good ones. This was a good one to go long. This was a good one to short. I, are people asking questions? Let me see if I know how to do this question chat thing. Where is the chat? Oh, there it is. Okay, uh, let me just see if, if people are asking questions here. If the gap has already happened, is it already too late to trade in the same direction? No, no it's not. It is not. Um, what I'm looking for is follow through in the gap, but no, it's not too late to trade it. Let's look at WMT. Actually, this is a good example here. Stephanie was asking, is it too late to trade it? No, here, proof of this. What happened here, Walmart? We did this one, we did puts, we shorted it. Stock closed here, gap down. So it closed up here the night before, 
Okay, right around 147 and change, boom. Gap down in the morning, I rated it. Open at 138, rallied, broke. So we did a short in here as far as an equity trade and we did puts, fell off a planet. In fact, I got out of this, you know, early. Uh, this went to the dream target, which was 130, it broke that. I don't even know where this is at today. This is probably selling off today for sure. It's been selling off since the earnings and it's probably selling off today with the market, this Walmart. So no, it's not too late. You want to get the confirmation that it is going to continue, okay? And again, I'm not trading that nighttime action. And it would be too difficult to trade anyways because what happens in that period is huge, massive position sizes that are creating the gap in the first place. Look here. This was at 147. This opened at 138. This is happening in a very short period of time. I forget if Walmart was at night or in the morning. I, I totally forget. But whatever the period of time here is very, very quick. So it was a big move that happened quickly 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 so you don't even have time to do anything here if you even wanted to do it so what's the reason another reason to trade graphs a great risk reward payout so you're looking to risk usually whatever amount you're looking to make one to one okay but sometimes you can make way more than that and we'll talk about some of those trades here today but it's the idea of playing momentum and you saw that there in the Walmart and also you can take fast fast uh, trades and get out quickly, which is obviously ideal. You would prefer to get out of trades quickly rather than have to deal with market volatility. What's happening today, what happened yesterday in the market, and actually what happened since Monday is what I call volatility. What do I mean? I mean, something is happening that is unexpected. And that that's what volatility is. It doesn't necessarily mean selling. It could mean rallying too, but whatever it is, it's something that occurs and happens out of nowhere, unexpected, that people aren't expecting, and that's how they get trapped in trades in the wrong direction, okay? So what I'm trying to look for is to read institutional money in the gap. I'm reading it in the pre-market and the post-market, and I'm reading it in the day chart, and I figure it all out ahead of time, okay? In the morning early, I usually get up about, you know, 6 a.m., but I sit down and start looking at the market and rating my gaps by 7, 7.30 in the morning. Now, you need to give yourself at least one hour, I think, to prepare to trade, so at least 8.30, but I like to take my time and look at everything, and again, I'm... I'm running live trading room Monday through Friday. In fact, if you're interested in a trial, you can email me to come tomorrow, the last day of the week. Tonight, I'll be watching Cost. Costco has earnings tonight, and GPS has earnings tonight, too. Will they gap? Probably. Where will they gap? I don't know. I will watch them, and I will rate them after they gap. They could gap up. They could gap down. I will be looking at them. But it's the idea of focusing on one thing, and preferably one ticker symbol. One ticker symbol, that's it. So if, if you can focus on one trade, you plop on the size to it, and that's how you can make a lot of money. Also, you, you reduce your losses if you're not trading, 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 trading all day from 9.30 to 4. It becomes very problematic when you're in trades for a very, very long time. Again, if you're day trading, you have to be flat by 4 o'clock. You don't have a lot of time to mess around. And that's one of the reasons why I like to do the fast trades too. But you can use my system for gaps to do options and day trades. Options you can hold overnight. You can do those. We did some nice options in Twitter. I told you we did the put in the Walmart. Twitter was calls. We'll talk about them. Uh, I think I have this in here in this lecture today too. But you can use gaps to do options or equity trades, day trades, if that's what you wanna do. So again, the big profits is one of the reasons I like to do them and the speed. So here was the Rust. We did this yesterday. And again, it kept going. In fact, I think it went all the way down to 110 and change, um, continuing to fall, but let's take a look at that. So yesterday was 3.3. The stock closed up here, gap down. Closed up here around 117 and change, boom. Open in the morning here. It was like around 114-ish, okay? We shorted it. I'll show you the one minute in a, in, in a minute. But I looked at this on the daily to determine if I wanted to do it, if I wanted to, again, take it in the direction of the gap, which would be a short, it gapped down, but then I entered the trade in the one minute, okay, which we did on the Rost. So this was, again, a bearish gap. So here's what we did. Entry was 113.80, boom. Shares was 3,000. Risk was 25.50. Exit, 112.75. Again, I got out of this with what, what I thought was a nice move. It was a dollar. It was a good trade, profit 30,150. But this stock went um, down another $2, basically you could have made even more. But I like to get in and out fast in the morning, preferably before lunch, preferably by 10 a.m. if I can. And again, that is what we did with this. It was a very, very quick trade. So anyways, we got in it and we got the drop, boom, okay? And you could have got out. 
or you could have held it down in here. Boom. Either way, nice move, nice short in the rost. If you had a smaller size, if you had a, a, a beginner risk, you could have taken 1,000 shares, and I'm just showing you here because you don't have to take an advanced trader risk. You can risk less. You could have taken 100 shares and still made money in this. I, I um, am doing this for a long time, so I use a, a bigger size, but 1,000 shares, you could have made $1,005 risking 850. Okay, game, Send same setups in here. When I call the trades in the live trading room, you can go to my YouTube and subscribe. I call the trade, I call the entry, and then I call the stop. And then obviously I call the exit. The target on this really, the normal target was 113. I was happy when it broke uh, 113 and it booped down and then we got out of it. But it did continue and it did continue down $2 past this number, which was insane if you wanted to hold it. The market did pull this down a little bit more, I think longer yesterday, but you know, I think getting out of the morning and, and taking your profits is good. The confirmation is the rating system that I teach in the class, Stephanie. When do, when do I, it depends. I do both uh, stocks and options. I did not do an option in Rust. In fact, I didn't even look at the cost of it. I think sometimes it's easier to do one versus the other depending on the stock. For example, I'm not day trading Amazon. The cost is, is too prohibitive for me. I, I'm just not interested in doing that. It has big stops and huge spreads. It's better to do as an option. Something like the market, I think the market options are cheap, but I will day trade the market as well. I'm talking about the SPY or the QQQs. But the options in those compared to the cost of the market uh, ETFs right now, I think are much more reasonable if you want to trade the overall market. Um, and again, the market can be very volatile. But most of the things that we do, I would say, are in a reasonable uh, price point range, with the exception of the SPY, which costs over $300 a share. Uh, most of the things we do are probably between $20 and maybe $150. So it's not like we're doing a lot of very expensive stocks for day trading. And some of the things that I do do not make sense to do options. They don't have enough volume in the options chain. They don't make any sense. They don't move enough. I talked earlier about the fact that banks make brand new all-time highs. I, I've traded options in the banks before, but they're a pain in the ass, to be honest with you. They almost never go enough in the option unless they really have a big, 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 big move. It's you make like 25 cents or 30 cents on those if you risk a buck. It's hard to get any momentum in those options sometimes in the banks, although the stock can move. So I think JPM, Goldman, those are better stocks to do equity trades in. Like you could have been going long them and you would have made money or even done them as a swing trade. Okay. But, you know, many times when I'm doing an option, I'm looking for a 50% return on investment or 100% return on investment. So it depends on what you do. Certain ones are better than others to trade as options. And again, it just varies from whatever stock it is. And I don't trade penny stocks and I don't trade low flow stocks and I don't trade stocks with no volume. So that's just like a given, not a rule, but I just don't touch them. So the time in this trade was 10 minutes. Fast, 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 fast. Again, it continued. Some people did hold it. I did not. Um, in fact, actually, the, I have the trading room on YouTube if you want to go listen to it. I lost internet. I lost internet yesterday at Problems Verizon. was down in New York City. I don't know why. It was beautiful weather. But I had issues with um, my internet yesterday. And somehow, uh, by a miracle, I was able to get a trade in uh, before I lost the internet. But it was spotty before they open, and, and then I got this trade in. So it all worked out for me. But normally, I'm looking for the fast trades anyways. Okay. Um... I don't know what you mean about mainly Amazon. You lost me there with your question, Joe, about mainly Amazon. You kind of lost me there with your question. I do options in Amazon, um, but I, I don't day trade it. So one of the reasons to trade gaps is big profits. Well, again, let's look at the one we did the day before. Yesterday was Wednesday, Tuesday, we did DDD. So this continued. You could have done a swing trade in this. Actually, I didn't do an option in this, but you could have. This continued down. This went to the dream target. Actually, I got out of this before this fell even on the end of the day here on Tuesday. So here's the gap down. Stock closed here, gap down, boom. Okay, this was again Tuesday. Here's the day chart. Again, we shorted it. We shorted it. We took it in the direction of the gap. It rated to do as a short. We did it. This was earnings too. Entry was 36.30, boom. 2,000 shares, risk was 2,600, exit 3,460. What's really hilarious is that this went to 31. <laughs> uh, so I could have had bigger gains of this too, but, um, and I had internet that day, but you know, I, I like to get out in the morning. So, you know, and I'm plopping on the size. It's, you know, it's, I don't ever even move my stop to break even. I just get out of it. 
I mean, you can always go back in. Anyways, this was 3,400 profit, but here's what it did. We took it here, we shorted it, we got the drop. I wanted to show you here, even though this is squished, this is a one minute chart on the DDD. This was the open 930. Here it went all the way down. I know these are tiny bars. I did not hold this all the way down here, but this did go to the dream target. This was 31. And here's the end of the day. And from the place that we shorted it, all the way up in here, it never looked back. You could have been in this all day. Okay. Um, I've never done anything with that at all. In fact, I don't even know what it is. So obviously I've never done anything with it. So as far as specific stocks go versus ETFs, I mainly focus on stocks. I will trade the SPY. I will trade the QQQs. There's a new ETF on work from homes. I don't do that. I have never traded that either. That does not have enough data for me to look at it to trade. So it's rare that I would do an ETF. If I do, it's probably the overall market. I'll do the diamond sometimes. I've traded gold before, but I don't even know all the ETFs that are out there. I prefer not to trade them. I will trade the overall market because of the volatility that exists in the market. And occasionally I've done something like an ETF in gold or silver, but I'm not doing the weird ones. I don't even know what all of them are. I prefer to trade stocks. I think you get more play in stocks, bigger moves in stocks. People get emotional about stocks. They either love them or they hate them, like, like the way that people love Apple. So I prefer to trade stocks. But if I'm looking for a trade and I really, really can't find anything, it's not that I'm anti-ETFs, but there's very few that I trade. I certainly don't know all the ones out there. They're making up new ones like the work from home one too. And that I don't think has enough data because what I do is look at technical analysis. What I do is based on technical analysis. And if something doesn't have enough life history, then I probably tend not to trade it. And again, I really don't think you get the same playthrough in some of these other ETFs as you would if you played a specific stock in the sector. So for example, if you wanted to do something like very often, very often, like if we do Boeing, and if I'm in love with Boeing, then I'll probably do the diamonds on that day because it's such a big percentage of, of, of the diamonds, of the Dow, Boeing is in the stock. So that's kind of how I look at it. Or if I do if I do Apple, then I might do the Qs or vice versa because Apple's a big part of the QQQs. So there's usually always a stock tied to that for some reason if I do that one specific ETF. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, anyways, this was Tuesday, and this continued. I mean, this just kept collapsing. If you wanted to do a beginner risk, took a thousand shares of this, boom, risk was thirteen hundred. Could have made seventeen hundred again. One flip around. So if you're risking a thousand, you're looking to make a thousand. If you're risking two thousand, you're looking to make two thousand. If you can make more than that, great. Again, this collapsed. That I mean, you could have seriously, seriously made five dollars on this. You could have made over five grand, and it's just with a thousand shares if you held it all the way down, and it never looked back. From where we shorted it, where I got into this area, it went, it just went straight down. Now the market actually helped this. I mean, the market helped this for the last couple of days, the same thing with Ross, but this was a quick trade too. In and out, boom. And again, if you have things to do, if you have another job to go to, if you're doing this part time, to be in a trade in and out in the first half an hour is great. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Although you could have held these things all day. Now let's look at the Twitter. Twitter was back. Twitter was back, uh, when was that? Beginning of February now. God, it feels like a long time ago. We did it, we did this a bunch of days. We did this a ton of days, actually. We did calls in this, and we went long. It was a day trade several of the days because this really was a nice gap up. This closed here. This gapped up. Rally. So anyways, we did this a bunch of days in here. It continued. Went to the dream target, which was 80, which, again, was, you would have been in for the option. But here was the day trade that we did this in the Twitter. And again, one, two, three, boom. This closed here gapped up. 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 So is it too late? Someone asked earlier if, if it happens in the gap. Hell no. Look at this. We just keep doing it, doing it, doing it. And it was a beautiful, beautiful move. And the setups were there. You got to get the setup. The confirmation on the live day, after I rate it, after it looks good, is the setup. And again, I teach that in the class too, but here's what we did. We entered this long at 73, okay, and we exited 74.70. was a nice move. It was almost two bucks. Profit was 4,780. This was a good, uh, nice trade that just went straight up. I'll show you the one minute in this. This was on Twitter. 
A beginner risk again a thousand shares. You could have made seventeen hundred. A nice trade, a buck seventy. Now here was the one. So again, this was two sixteen. I don't know. This was like I think four days into it or something, where we did it. Here's seventy three. Right in here we went long, and then it went poof, and it went up. And we had a great exit on this actually. We had a, we had a perfect exit on this actually, even though it held pretty well in the live day up green. So again, morning train, in, out, take it, get out, boom, done. This took a little bit longer, longs do take longer. That is why I prefer to short, but I wanted to show you a long here because I will go long, but I prefer to short. I prefer to short. But the reasons I like to do gaps is they happen fast. Whether they take 15 minutes, 10 minutes, or even if you have to do a long, you have to wait 45 minutes or something, that's still a short time comparatively when you figure the market's open for six and a half hours. And obviously today would have been a great example. Like if you had gone long something this morning, you were a lot better off getting out of it before Powell started to talk and the market started to break and broke the low. So when you can book money in the morning, particularly if you're looking to day trade, if you're doing the day trades and you can get in and out quickly in the morning, you're a lot better off because you don't have to deal with the wiggles and jiggles of the market, okay? Most likely the market will do something tomorrow. What it does, I don't know. It will depend on what the data is that comes out, which is in the pre-market. Market's going to gap somewhere tomorrow. Could be up, could be down, could be surprise everyone after the sell-off today. In fact, I'm not even sure how we end up closing today here. I'll look when I'm done. But the fact is that there's data. We're expecting the unemployment rate is 6.4. If that breaks 6, market's probably going to rally if it ends up being down lower. If it gets up to above 7, close to 7, the market could have a negative reaction, okay? In my opinion, the negative reaction the market's having on, on rates is overblown. So we'll really have to see if we follow through with this tomorrow or not. But what I do is just gaps. That's it. And how I've made more money year over year in the last, you know, 13 years I've traded is I just add size. And plus, I've started to do options. In the last six years, I've been doing options. So I plop on the size when I'm wanting to make more. Instead of doing 10 trades a day or a million different strategies or Forex or Bitcoin or whatever, I just do the thing that I know, the thing that I'm good at, and I just add more size. And again, I'm taking them as options to get the overnight move. But if you're starting out and you're trying to figure, okay, I want to make 50 cents in this or a dollar in this, you can size yourself accordingly, but it has to be based on the cash size of your account as well. If you're not sure about that, you can always ask me. But really, even risking $500 in a trade, in my opinion, is a good amount to risk. You do not have to risk $1,000 in a trade. $500 is good. If it loses, you lose $500. If it makes money, you know, you could still make two grand plus a week. So, if 500 is a nice, easy amount, I think for people who even have small accounts that you could work with, especially when you're learning and you're trying to, to, to follow me and, and, and follow along really in the room. But I really only trade day trades, 30 to 60 minutes a day. That's the time that I'm focusing on. So one of the big benefits to work for yourself and trade from home is what? You can work whenever you want. You could take a day off. You're not working all day. It's not eight hours, let alone no overtime. And your income is only determined on how much you're risking per trade. The more you take, the more size, the more you're going to make. So there's many, many benefits to trading. I found that people are all over the place with their commitment level since I've had the stock switch business, um, you know, since I've had a lot of following. You know, some people are just not committed and then they wonder why they fail, why they lose, why they're not making money. I was extremely committed when I started out trading because I really wanted to change careers. That's one of the reasons I made it. But when I started, I lost money. It took me three years to figure out my system. If I hadn't been committed, I would have never figured out what I know today, and I'd never be where I am today. I mean, I don't even know what I would have done. I wouldn't have stayed in the mortgage industry, though. That's for sure. I'm sure it's even tougher now than it was, um, you know, 16 years ago. But the fact is that you have to be committed. You ha have to have some level of commitment to learning it. Trading is a skill. Uh, everybody wants to make money in the market, but it's not as easy as just joining a group of Reddits and taking a trade that everybody wants to jump on. And you really saw that with the way that stock reacted because it had one move up and immediately collapsed. <laughs> so, I mean, it's you have to learn how to trade if you want to make money. Trading isn't gambling. It's just not. I mean, you can throw darts at a board if you want, but the analyzing what you're doing, the process of what you're doing is what really, really, really makes a big, big difference and you have to understand why you're taking the trade. Why would you short something or why are you going long something? So I'm looking for ideally on every gap that I read, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Again, doesn't mean I'm holding all day. I didn't hold the Rosh, I didn't hold the DVD. But I'm looking for high probability. I'm looking for a big move on the day. And I'm looking for early confirmation of the bias and the move between 9.30 and 10. 
And I'm also looking for precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward target potential. Okay. Any questions here? I think we will have time to, to pull up the market. But you know, you plop on the size, how to get to that point, you have to prove to yourself that you can do it. Be consistent. You have all the time in the world to make money once you learn how to trade. So my system is called the Golden Gap System. It's a 26 point professional bearish gap rating system. I like to focus on shorts. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. This checklist tells you what to trade when and in what direction. The 26 point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock. Now, as I said earlier, I also will do options. So we did a bunch of options in Twitter. And I said, we were gonna keep doing these and keep going on this until it stopped working. Because quite frankly, this was a beautiful, beautiful gap. This gap that happened back here was in the 10th was in earnings. I don't know where this is at today, but I'd be shocked if this breaks here. I don't think that this gap is gonna break. Despite the fact the market's selling off, Twitter is holding up pretty well, considering most things right now in the last two days in the market. So on that one day, on that first day, we went long Twitter, we did the 65 calls. Cost was 215, that was cheap. So again, this would have been cheaper to do the option than to buy the stock even at $65 a share. Sold it at 460, return on investment was 113%. So in advanced risk, I risk way more in my options simply because I am doing expensive trades sometimes like Google and Amazon and I want my risk to be all equal. Uh, risk was 75.25, profit 85.75. And we'll go back to this here, that was 210. So here again, 210 was this day when this open dropped, we did the 65s, okay? Then it rallied up and then it continued. So this was a nice move. And that was on the Wednesday expired to the following Friday. Sometimes I'll do the same week. Sometimes I'll do them at two weeks, depending on what I see the move. Now this, you can see I called the trade in the pre-market. So a lot of the options I call in the pre-market, most of them I actually do. Strike was 68, okay? This was Friday then, expected a continuation move up, which it did. Cost was 260, again, advanced risk, 7,800, 30 contracts, sold at 525, profit 79.50, return to investment 102%. So let's go look at the daily. This was the Twitter on the day we did the seconds, was here on the 12th, and it went poof, okay? So you could have done him here, and you could have got out, or you could have done him here, and even held it into Monday. Really nice trade, big move up, nice follow through. Um, and that was the 68 calls. So I will do options and I will do day trades, but the options you got to give more time. Uh, you have to give them more time to work. It's not like the day trades where we're in and out quickly, but people do day trade options. Sometimes I'll day trade an option, but, but, but not all the time. I mean, most of the time I'm not, to be honest with you. Most of the time I'm holding them and I'm looking for a big move. So right now we're in this period and it's, it's an interesting period here where people are changing careers. Some people are unemployed. Some people are still employed but working from home so their life is very, very different. And many people are at home because their kids are at home and they're not, not back in school yet. And so, I mean, we're just in a very strange period even here still, even though it's 2021. It's almost a year anniversary to COVID and, and I don't know, who knows? Maybe that's the reason the market's selling off. What's today, March 4th? It's almost a year anniversary. Today's world is not the same as 25 years ago or 10 years ago, or even five years ago, or even a year ago, pre-COVID. Seems like a forever ago, doesn't it, people? What we think is a secure job today may be gone tomorrow. Look at the world economy and the decisions that lawmakers are making for you. Who knows if the stimulus will pass? And if it does, I don't think people are getting checks still May. I mean, they're not getting them now. Could be April, maybe, if people are lucky. They've been talking about it since November, and nobody got their checks after the election, and here we are. You've got to rely on yourself. You have to be independent. And if you're an entrepreneurial person and you have that type of mindset, you're going to be much, much better off. Yes, it takes worse work. Uh, and no one said it's going to happen overnight. But it really is worth it in the end because leaving your destiny in the hands of the government or other people or even your boss, um, you know, is, is crazy when you look at the world today. I always was the type of person that was independent and wanted to work for myself, so that's just my nature. But I think people are starting to wake up now and realizing that they really have to create their own future. So ask yourself, do you want to create your own future or do you want someone else to determine it? And I kind of realized that with the mortgage industry when it changed because it wasn't my fault. I did a great job. Banks stopped wanting to approve loans. Uh, banks started going under. 
had nothing to do with me, nothing to do with my clients that came and wanted to buy homes or refinance. We can be great employees, productive, outgoing, hardworking, and it may not even matter to anyone, not our employer, not anyone in the end. And then you're laid off and you don't have a job and the company can't keep you on. If a company has poor management, they might fail and it has nothing to do with you. Or your industry might fail and it has nothing to do with you, aka banks, mortgages, healthcare. And in the last year with COVID, we've seen what? Restaurant industry. Uh, we've seen the travel industry. We've seen the airlines tank. In fact, I didn't even look at Boeing today. I'll have to look at that later. You're a skilled person with a great mind and you can learn how to do this. The time it takes for you to get to the point where you know what I know is up to you, but I'm here to teach people and that's what I've been doing and I'm calling the trades live in the room. You can work for yourself in the market, you can create your own job security and you can create your own opportunity by taking it upon yourself to learn how to trade the market and make money trading. Something I did a long time ago and I don't regret it, but I was pretty much set when COVID came I, I knew the market wasn't going to disappear, but it's interesting. There was a period there in March where I wondered if they were going to close the market for a couple of days. I, I seriously wondered that. Right after they announced the 15 days to slow the spread, the market was insane. In fact, I think we had days in there that we halted, uh, you know, which was scary, to be honest with you. Very, very uh, not normal, abnormal, I should say, for the market to halt. But in the end, the market kept going. It kept going and going and going, and we recovered, and we came back. And whatever sell-off we're doing today, we'll recover from this too. So I teach people my system. It's one strategy. That's all you need to be successful in the market. You do not need a general overall broad-based view to make money. Again, I follow what's happening in the news. I am aware of the fundamentals, but I don't have time to read all the reports that come out in every earnings. How would I have time to do anything or sleep or trade? I'm reading the charts. It's technical analysis. I'm reading the institutional money and the price patterns in gaps. And quite frankly, you don't need to do anything else if you don't know how to do this. Uh, you know, you learn it. And like I said, it's a skill and you will apply the skill. It's price forecasting. That's what I'm doing. I'm looking at the past price data and forecasting the future price data. And that's why I don't look at things that don't have a long history, okay? If your reason for doing this is to make money, then you have to have a system that makes money, okay? At least again, consistently. So if you have time to trade between 9.30 and 10, um, if you like the idea of being out of, in and out of trades quickly, if you have a passion for trading and working from home, then this may be something for you. So on average, it's one to one, whatever you risk. If you're risking 500, your expectation should be to make 500. If you're risking 1,000, your expectation should be to make 1,000. I do use stops. I try to only do one trade a day if possible or stick on the same symbol. Because for me, it's not about quantity, it is about quality, okay? It's about quality, quality, quality. And uh, so that's, you know, that's what I focus on. So again, my class is called the Golden Gap System. Here's some testimonials from people. This was uh, last year, 2020. Zen Trader focuses on the options. And we had a really strong start to the year 2020. When we had COVID, we had some huge trades in Tesla and BYND. And that was before Tesla um, got into the, the market ETF. But overall, I still think we're going to have the continued volatility that, we've, that we had in 2020 this year. And I think you're seeing that actually this week. We did Boeing a ton of times. We've been shorting Boeing. We're not going long Boeing. It's been a mess. Um, Jackie is someone that started out with me. She's been with me about three years. She's a nurse. Um, and then she quit her job and is trading full time. So she's been doing well as well. So you don't have a lot of experience to do this. You can be a beginner, you can be somebody, you know, right out of school. Um, as long as you have the money to open up an account to trade and do my class, I can teach you. So you have to have the time available though between 9.30 and 10 to do the day trades. If you wanna do the options, you can you can just sign up for the options newsletter and you just get the options emailed to you, like the Twitter trades I, I had in the class here. But I've taught people that have never traded in their life that are total beginners. I teach everything from the beginning from candlesticks up but it's really the looking at the gap and analyzing the gap that really, really makes a big difference. So I look at the gap in the morning. I rate the gap using a 26 point checklist. If it rates 20 points or more per my system, I will take it in the direction of the gap. So Twitter gapped up, it rated well, I went long. And I did it as calls and I did it as options and I did it as day trades long. A WMT, Walmart, rated as a short gap down. It continued, we did punts in it, and we shorted it as a day trade. So that's the philosophy I'm looking at. Walmart sold off, 
had institutional selling, Twitter got bought, had institutional buying, okay? So I teach all of this in the class. It's a complete system to learn how to trade. It teaches you the entries, the points, the targets, support, resistance, all the things that you're gonna need to be able to make the decisions. And of course, I'm, I'm helping to mentor people through this. So my class is called the Golden Gap Course. This is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. It's a class designed by me, Melissa Armo. And the class is not this weekend, but next weekend, which is actually daylight savings time. I didn't realize this when I set the date, but Sunday the 14th is daylight savings time. So I think, what do we do? We spring ahead, so we lose an hour. So I'll be, be getting up early that day, but it's nine to five. Cost of the class tuition is $69.99 US dollars. If you want to sign up, you have to email me. You can go to my website, look at the information, but you still have to email me to sign up. Now, I'm doing an early bird special through tomorrow. I know tomorrow is one day, but you can come in the room and do a trial if you want for one day. You may make money um, following me, but the deadline for the early bird is tomorrow. You get the trading room free to the end of the year through 12-31-21. If you want to sign up, you get the trading room free for one year, which is a huge deal. You have to sign up and do the class in order to join the room, but there's normally a fee for the room. But if you pay for the class, you get the room free to the end of the year, which is basically almost the whole year. It's, a, it's the next 10 months of the year, so it's a good deal. Now, we, ha oh, we do have some time here. Do I have until 3, David? I can bring up some charts. Am I, am I till 2? Yeah, um, okay. yeah, until just before 3, so another 15 minutes or so. Yeah. Okay, let me – I know we did this before. If I stop sharing and then share again, I think I can put the chart up. You see it? Uh, yes, I yeah, I see the chart now. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at this here. In fact, let me let me look at Boeing since I talked about that. I'm just curious here. Any questions about any st here? This did fall today. Yeah. Uh, the room is normally five hundred dollars a month, or if you sign up for the year, you get a discount. If you sign up for the whole year after the end of 2020, but normally five hundred if you want to go monthly, or or there's a discount if you sign up for the year. So let's look at this here. Actually, let me fix this here. Let's go back farther. So yeah, so we've been doing a million shorts in this. I mean, I, I'm not in this right now, but I'm not surprised at all. This has been struggling and struggling and struggling and struggling with this area. I mean, and, and again, this has gone back to when we dropped off with COVID. This has never recovered from that COVID sell-off. And I'm not surprised. I mean, we'll see where the next earnings are in this for second quarter. But, you know, could this recover? Yes. But ultimately, you know, this has had so many problems, not just the COVID, not just the lack of travel. This has had, you know, accidents and, and, and mechanical problems and issues. This is, and so again, if I would look at doing something like this, somebody's asked about ETFs, I would look at, if I did something with this, I would probably also do the diamonds that same day too. Like if I went long going, I'd probably go long the diamonds. If I shorted Boeing, I'd probably short the diamonds because they tend to go together. Uh, the newsletter, the, the trading, the options newsletter is not a class. You just get the newsletter emailed to you in live time in your email. You take the trade when you get it based on the strike and the ticker symbol in live time. If you get them in the morning pre-market, you take them in the first five, 10 minutes of the day, you enter it and you will manage those trades yourself. It's an annual newsletter, which is $69.99 for the year. So you get all the options trades for one year, no class with that. Let's go look at the Twitter. Again, you can go to my website uh, and look at all the classes I have, www.thesockswitch.com. See, this is holding up. Yee. Low of this here is 63.20. This is trying to hang on. It is hanging on. So I, I'm i going to be watching this one. I, I really think this hangs on. This is hung on more than a lot of things. And you know what else is hung on well? Disney. So Disney was one that fell on the earnings. But then this was the day of the earnings back here. Blew it out then. Blew it out, ran up. Ran up to the big target of the 200. It tried to make it here but couldn't do it. Made it up. Dropped down. And now look how well this is holding on. So Disney is one of the strongest things in the market I'm looking at. Twitter is still one of the strongest things in the market I'm looking at. And I'm just trying to pinpoint things here that are strong to just to see because the market's selling off how and what they're holding up. And now let's look at the banks like I discussed. So here was this. This is falling today with the market too, but this was up so much. And this is why 
you're not going to have the market completely tank without the banks. 154.90, 154.98, that was yesterday. And Goldman, I know when it got up to 340. In fact, it made new highs yesterday. Market sold off yesterday. Goldman was over 340. I mean, you just, you're not going to have the market collapse and, and have the banks at new highs. It's an impossibility. But we are selling off today. And, you know, do I think we're going to hold it forever? Meaning the banks and the financials? Well, I don't know. They, we, here in New York, I mean, they keep pushing off the eviction for, for rentals. People are living in apartments here in New York City and not paying the landlord for a year, which is crazy. It's bad for the landlords. They still have mortgages. They're still paying taxes and all the fees, but it's going to come to a head. They keep extending the deadline for the foreclosure moratorium as well. At some point, it's all going to come to a head. I don't know when that will be. My expectation is they will keep pushing it out, but then some point it's going to come to a head. When that happens, people could, terrible as it sounds, go into foreclosure. You will have loan defaults. Um, and you could even have more commercial defaults because some of these businesses, not the ones that went under, but the places that have loans that have people where they're not paying their rent, that is a problem. That is a problem. And one year into it, it could it could all come together. And I think that's way more of a problem than uh, bond rates rising, which everyone's screaming about and the reason that we sold off here and that we even had the sell-off that we had last week. I mean, to me, that is not a big deal. You cannot earn as much money in a bond as you can in the market. People are not gonna dump all of their positions in the market. I'm talking about high net worth individuals. I'm talking about super wealthy people because you know, that's what I'm talking about. Big investment firms that are managing money for people, wealthy people. And, and you're not gonna have them all dump all their positions and then buy bonds. It's just not gonna work out that way. They may sell some of their positions, but we're not gonna fall all the way down, in my opinion, 100 points from here. And if you look at the SPY, you're like, oh my God, we could go down to, to, to 340. I mean, I just don't see that happening. I could be wrong, but I just don't see it happening. So I'm not sure at this market. And you know, I had a guy that was trying to pitch me on buying corporate bonds. I think it was like, I think it was a year ago, is and 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 I just it just you don't get paid that much. I just didn't. You just don't get that much interest. I just I I didn't. I didn't do it. I didn't invest in them. I just didn't feel like I could go for it. I get people uh, manage their money and like to be in safe havens, but I just don't see it here. And also, interest rates for savings CDs, uh, even long term certificates of deposits, they've hardly risen in the last week. Money market savings, uh, uh, they haven't risen at all. So I think this is a short-term reaction here, an overblown reaction here, in my opinion. Uh, the Fed will keep rates low. I think the biggest danger to the market long-term, if we end up changing trends or something, is another huge COVID outbreak that could be disaster, where we'd hit up over a million deaths or something, God forbid, in the country, or something like you know where the banks have just get crushed from defaults. Um, so it remains to be seen. But those are the dangers that I see looming out for the market in the next 12 to 18 months. And, and right now, the banks look so, 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 so good. You say, well, how can the banks be at new highs and how can the market be falling? Well, it doesn't make sense. But a lot of things in the market don't make sense. And that's one of the reasons why I don't make trading decisions based on fundamentals. I'm talking it through with you, but I'm looking at the gap. And when I see the gaps in the market here, I mean, you can't, like, what were the gaps in the market here? We had a baby gap down yesterday, which I didn't short. And then this today opened neutral. We didn't really gap down today. <coughs> and this was a gap down here and we didn't go anywhere. In fact, we reversed it and almost made new highs. So there was no gap downs in here, this market that I would have shorted and I didn't. So I'm, I'm watching here to see if I can get a strong bullish move. I don't know if I'm gonna get it tomorrow, but we could get it next week. But I, am, I will be very interested to see what happens here. And we've got about an hour left in the day here to see where we bounce and to see where we close. So it looks like we dropped all the way off here to 371.88. Again, this is why I like to short. Selling happens big, selling happens fast. Once the selling came in today and we broke the low, we crashed. But we're gonna bounce here because I think money is gonna come in and lift this market. Now, just let me look at um, Apple because Apple has been a drag on the queues. Apple has drugged the market down. No, this is hanging on. In fact, the spy looks worse right now than this. Um, any other questions about any specific stocks or anything else you want to look at? Google looks great. Look at this. No, let me look at Amazon. Facebook had a big rally this morning. Dropped all the way off. Oh, look at this. This is what I mean by volatility. Actually, we have calls in this right now. I like this higher. This was this morning. This ran all the way up here like the Dickens. Flip. 
And then, of course, once Pal started talking, this lost it all. But look how this is going. I wouldn't be surprised if this went all the way up, back to the tippy tippy top, even by the end of the day. And this is what, you know, why when you train, you have to know what you're doing. So I don't short something and then flip it and go long or vice versa. Like, I will not do that. Either I have a bias that is bullish or I have a bias that is bearish. Now, that doesn't mean that something may happen where we get a gap in the opposite direction that may make me change my mind, but it never happened in the market. And, you know, so my bias right now is still bullish in the SPY with the financials higher, and we never got to that 400 number. I don't know if we will soon, but I know that number's hanging out there. It's hanging out there. We got pretty, pretty close. We got up here to 394.17. So... You know, I'm, I'm looking at Costco for tonight. Let's just look at this here. We have a couple minutes. Tesla. <laughs> you want me to look at Tesla? Let's see what it's doing. I feel like I haven't done this in a million years, but I'll look at it. And then I want to look at Costco because Costco's out tonight. I'll tell you what I think about Costco. I would love to get a good trade in Costco. You know what I love? In an ideal world, I always say this. I say what I know what I'm looking for, and if I get it, I'm all in. In an ideal world, Costco gaps up. The market gaps up tomorrow. The data is better than expected, and we run like the Dickens. That's the, in an ideal world, that's what we do. But let's just look at Tesla. I would love that play. Because it, it just gets too hard to short here with the way that we've acted. One, we haven't gotten any good gap down setups to short this market. And two, it just gets too hard to, to go in when you're when you're down two three days like we are you know what i'm saying now let's look at this i don't think this is real but i don't know what's going on with that bar there i don't think that's real i think that's a messed up bar last time this made new highs was 125 feels like a long time ago this is still strong I don't know, you can't, you can't short this here. I mean, you just can't do it. You can't do it. You know, I, I'd wait for the next earnings on this. I can look it up and see when they are. Um, this seems like it has a long way to go, though. 300 points almost off the high. Did we get down to 600 in this today? Yeah, and it's bouncing off of it. I would not do anything with this right now. I wouldn't short it, and I wouldn't go long it, and I'd wait for the earnings on that to see what it does. Let's look at Costco. So again, like I said, I would love this to gap up, and I'd like it to be a big one, a big one, and then a gap up in the market with good data tomorrow morning. But this is out tonight. So this is out tonight. So again, talking it through in my mind what I want to see. I want to see a gap up in this tonight. Market do whatever today into the close. Then we have follow through, more buying coming in tomorrow morning with you know, good market data to pull this up even more, do you know what I'm saying? Like 340, 350, 340, 350 would be a great, uh, great move up for this. I mean, really, when you look about it, 320, 20, 30 points up, that's not crazy. Microsoft? Well, I'm usually looking for a return investment of between 50 to 100%. But if, if for example, it depends on the timing of the, of the trade. If I'm running out of time, I might get out of it if it's 45%. Uh, if I'm running out of time, I'll get out of it at 50%. If I have time in it, I might give it the 100%. But many, many times, like the Twitter, they'll just run right up. I say the target, it runs right up. You're up more than 100% because this trade just goes. The best ones are the day that they go, the day that I call them. Or the, within 24 hours, I should say. If I call it and it follows through that day or it continues the following day. Microsoft is as slimy as the rest of these things because of the market. Look how look at this bar today. Let's just go over what, what did this do. It opened here at 226.73. It ran up to 232.49. Then it reversed, came down, low was 224.26, and now it's back up here where it opened. I mean, the extension on this bar today, again, we were discussing volatility. You could have shorted this and gone long it today. That is not what I do. I do not do the opposite, flip-flop around all day. 
But this is why today was so crazy because you could have made money shorting this today and you could have made money going long it today. There, the Microsoft. My average win ratio is about 70, 75% on any given month, David. Or Daniel, I'm sorry. If you have questions, you can email me. My email is Melissa at the stock .com. Listen, stay safe, everyone. Um, we're still hunkering down in New York. One day I'll be free to walk the streets without a mask and breathe. <laughs> I hope it's before summer and the weather gets up to 85 again. Any other questions from anybody? One day. One day. Soon everyone's going to move to Texas. A friend of mine today, she's like, why don't you move to Texas? They have no state taxes. You can buy a mansion for a million dollars. And I'm like, Texas is too far away. Anyways, have a great day, everyone.